Hey, I'm Mechanical Engineer, and today we'll be talking about ESCs. I've been getting asked for a while now about how all the electronics in my BattleBot plug in and operate. And so today I'm going to try to give an overview on how everything works. We're not going to go into very great detail, it's going to be just the basics, but hopefully it'll be enough to get you started. And fair warning, there are a lot of different versions for the electronics we're going to be using today, so make sure you always read the instructions that come with them before you try to use them. But enough talk, without any further ado, let's get started. Here I have an ESC. Now ESC stands for Electronic Speed Controller. What it does is, as the name implies, it helps control the speed of your motor. It does do a few other things, but we'll touch on those later. With an ESC, you have a lot more control over your motor. If you want to go stupid slow, super fast, or anywhere in between, the ESC's got you covered. Now there's primarily two different kinds of ESCs. There's brushed ESCs, like this one, that are meant for brushed motors, and then there's brushless ESCs, like this one, meant for brushless motors. An easy way to tell the difference is a brushless ESC will typically have three outgoing wires to connect to the motor, whereas a brushed ESC will only have two. So with all that being said, let's now begin on how to plug in and use an ESC. Let's get started with the brushed. Now before we get started, I just want to note, always read the instructions that come with your ESC, because if you don't, you could accidentally plug it in the wrong way and blow it out. So always check the instructions first. Now for this brushed ESC, as you can see, we have four different groups of wires. First off, we have a black and white wire with a female connector on the end of it, and that is actually what our battery plugs into. Then we have a second pair of black and white wires, only this one has a male lead connected to the end of it. This is actually what we're going to plug our brushed motor into. As you can see, I do need to solder on a female connector to the motor so we can plug it in, but that's what that's for. Then we have two red wires, which actually leads to a power switch. Now, if for some reason you want to keep this, you can, but for me, I usually cut off at the base and solder the wires together so I don't have to worry about it. And now lastly for our brushed ESC, we have this colored ribbon which plugs right into our receiver. Now for the brushless ESC, it's actually very similar to the brushed. You have your colored ribbon that plugs into your receiver, and then you have your positive and negative wires that you plug your battery into. I cut them off real short for a good reason, I trust. Really, the only thing that's different externally is that it has three output wires for the motor instead of just two. So now how do you plug in a brushless motor into a brushless speed controller? It honestly really doesn't matter which cables you plug into which because all it really affects is polarity. What I mean by that is let's say we plug in the motor just like it is right now and for sake of demonstration we'll say that makes the motor spin clockwise. Well if we want the motor to spin counterclockwise all you'd have to do is switch where two of the wires are plugged in and it doesn't matter which two. Just as long as you swap two of the wires the motor's polarity will be reversed. Now it is important to note that there are variations within each group of VSC. For instance, when it comes to brushless motors, a lot of VSCs can go forward but can't go backwards. But that's totally cool if you're going to use it for like an RC plane or a weapon on a battle bot to where it only has to spin one direction, but not so cool if you're going to use it for like a drivetrain. Now of course they do sell brushless ESCs that can do both forward and reverse, but they're typically just a little bit more expensive, so make sure you pay attention. Now on to a question that a lot of you guys, and I mean a lot of you guys have been asking. How do you know which channel on your receiver to plug your ESC into? And the answer to that question completely depends on how you want your robot to drive and how you have your transmitter set up. For me, I usually plug in my weapon motors, if that be a spinner or a lifter, into channel 3, which on my transmitter is controlled by the left joystick. Then on my two drive ESCs, I usually plug them into channels 1 and 2, which on my transmitter is controlled by the right joystick. And I've done a little bit of programming on my transmitters, so when I push forward, both ESCs go forward, backwards, they both go backwards, left, they spin, right, they spin, you get the picture. Now something that's really cool about ESCs is once you plug them in, they'll supply power to the whole receiver. And that's because most ESCs like these come with BECs or battery eliminator circuits built into them. Basically what a BEC does is it takes the power from the battery and steps it down to about 5 volts to give to the receiver. Now as you just heard, most ESCs come with built-in BECs, but not all of them. That's okay though, because they do sell small external BECs that you can use. However, for me, whenever possible, I try to buy speed controllers that already have them built in. 
So once I plug in my ESC into the receiver, I can plug in my servo into any channel I want and it will get power and operate because the ESC is super kind and loves to share. But once one ESC is plugged in, I cannot just plug in a second ESC anywhere I want and it automatically get power. That's because the second ESC is going to ask for way more power than the first one could ever give. So what we have to do to solve this problem is plug in both ESCs into the channels we want to control them through and also connect their battery import cables together as well, positive to positive and negative to negative. That way they'll both have a direct feed right to the battery and they don't have to worry about each other. Now go. Since I typically use a servo as my weapon motor, my setup usually looks something like this. We have my two drive motor ESCs sharing a battery connector with a set of wires on each side of that, of course for each drive motor. One ESC plugged into channel 1 and the other into channel 2. Then my weapon servo plugged into channel 3 which is getting its power from these ESCs. Now you probably already know this but it is very important to have at least two drive ESCs, one for each side. One controls the right motor and one controls the left. Because if you only had one drive ESC they couldn't spin in opposite directions, therefore they couldn't turn, they could only go forward and back. But with two ESCs they can both spin in the same direction, forward and back, or turn and go in opposite directions, left and right. Now when it comes to buying ESCs, you want to make sure that you buy one with the right amperage and voltage for your motor. If for instance you have a 20 amp motor, you're going to want at least a 30 amp ESC because you want to make sure the motor has more than enough power going to it. If I bought a 20 amp ESC for my 20 amp motor, things probably wouldn't end that well because my motor would be asking for more power than my ESC could give. But when it comes to voltage, unlike amperage, you want to make sure that your ESC and motor are about the same. So if you have a 12 volt motor, you're going to want a 12 volt ESC. And lastly, we have the battery. You want to make sure you buy the right size battery so you don't damage your ESCs. Probably the easiest thing you can do to make sure you get the right battery is go with the ESC's manufacturer's recommendations. They'll know which battery works best with their ESC. The only thing you should really have to decide is how many milliamp hours you want your battery to have, or in other words, how long you need your battery to last for. For me, when it comes to my one pound battle bot, since I typically don't use that large of motors, I can typically get away with about 300 milliamp hour battery. But if you're using larger or smaller motors, that number will vary. And that is actually where I'm going to end today's video. Once again, this was by no means a complete overview. This is just meant to be the very basics. But I truly hope this was helpful. I hope I answered all you guys' questions, or at the very least, guided you in the direction to where you can find the answers. But hey, thank you so much for you guys watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, please feel free to hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And Lord willing, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. And please feel free to subscribe.